Hello and welcome to Don Allen, the third YouTube channel. It's a pleasure to have you here today. Today we're going to be working on creating a 3D avatar that we can drive with a, with a filter inside a Snap. Now what's really cool in Snap is they have these things called the Snap Camera and we can use it to basically use all the Snap Camera lenses outside of um, Snapchat. So if you don't use Snapchat a lot but you love all their AR effects, you can actually use them still with the Snap Camera. It, it's free. So you can go to um, Snap Camera and it's a free app takes about one minute to download and install. It's called Snap Camera. You get this thing on your desktop and you can basically run all your video calls with filters. So you can do Zoom with this, you can do Google Hangouts, you can do um, Microsoft Teams, you can do um, FaceTime if you're on an iOS device. Basically, you can route this as the, the middle entity before you stream. So what we're gonna be doing uh, is, uh, uh, is, is this. We're gonna be creating a bored ape um, so first off, what is Board Apes? You might not even know that. Let me start off with that. So Board Ape Yacht Club is this thing. Uh, the Board Ape Yacht Club is a collection of 10,000 unique Board Ape NFTs. Each one is a unique and digital collectible that lives on the Ethereum blockchain. And it's also a membership. So if you become a member, oh, you said turn on the purple lights. Oh yeah, let me turn that on. Purple, purple lights. Go, that's one light, and then turn on this light. They're a little dim. Let's go purple. Yeah, they're a little dim today. Or maybe I'll turn down this. Oh, actually, I need that light for the green screen to work well on YouTube. So I still need to keep that on. But yeah, now there's like a nice little purple light back there. Okay. Um, so the deal is uh, these artworks are pretty cool. They came out in April. Initially, people were able to buy these artworks for about like $180, which was, you know, a lot, but that was a steal compared to how much these things are going for today. Right now, the least expensive board ape is about 45 grand, 45,000 US dollars for one of these things is the minimum that you can even get today, with a lot of them selling for over a million dollars at this point. So, um, a lot of people are turning their board apes into their avatars on Twitter, like, you know how you can have like a profile photo? A lot of people, like I think Steph Curry, basketball player, he just turned his, he bought one and then he turned his like Twitter handle to it. Um, we see, we see people using this on like the watches as, like a, as a watch face. They're wearing, they're making t-shirts and branding. So essentially when you invest something like this into an art piece and, and, and in this case into a community, you, you kind of want to share that you're part of that community. So I, I currently jump into a lot of um, Snapchat calls or a lot of Zoom calls, and I wear um, filters that I make with Snap Camera. I'll show you what I mean right really quick here. So let me pull up this little version of me so you can see me all larger on the screen. And if I go to the Snap Camera, I'm able to run effects that I've built um, in Snap and other ones that the, the community has built. I'm able to run them in here and change them and stuff. Uh, I can't do it right now because I, I am currently streaming to OBS, but you can essentially swap these things out um, and wear cool, you know, wearable stuff, uh, wearable filters in AR. And so I want to give owners of the Bored Apes that ability as well. And I think it might be a really cool way to start monetizing the metaverse for XR creators. I do think that NFTs will be one of the key ways that fund the metaverse. So anywho, today we're going to be focusing on ZBrush. We're going to be modeling in ZBrush, one of the board apes. Oh, this is, you can't find it on YouTube. It should be streaming on YouTube right now. Hello, David. Welcome. Uh, David's jumping up, uh, jumping on here on YouTube. Oh, and hello, Raphael. Welcome. Uh, very cool. We'll have to try this for teams. Yeah, I highly recommend you get the Snap camera. It's free and you don't even need a Snapchat account. And you just, you, you download it and literally it's like this. You can, you can wear Snap filters in video calls which gives it a lot of utility. You don't have to be using Snapchat app on the phone. You could just be on your desktop or on your laptop and you're running all those fun effects. People are getting Zoom fatigue. Here's an example. You could be streaming yourself playing a game and you could turn yourself into an avatar while you're streaming all in real time. You don't even need a green screen. Like this person has a green screen there, but you don't need a green screen because you can also use 
um, person segmentation that just uses AI to cut out the person from the background. It works on Windows and it works on Mac. But enough of that, I want to make that an available thing with a board ape because people are spending a lot of money on these board apes and I want to kind of create this as a business. Well, we're continuing to do the business and share the design secrets along the way. So I put together a bunch of reference images here. I use a free tool known as Pure Ref, P-U-R-E-R-E-F, Pure Ref, to load up my reference footage um, and images. Found some 3D models of board apes. I found some close-ups of a face in particular, so I really care about. And I found some of my favorite ones in here. I really like these designs. And we're gonna work on making a, a base mesh like this. Um, the difference is the 3D models that I've seen people put out there, they're using it for um, post processing or they're using it as a game character in a metaverse. Whereas I want to use the, the CGI 3D character. I want to use this as a, a real time avatar in your video calls. It's a little bit different. It is like very much like VTubing, uh, VTuber. Um, so constructing a VTuber with this tech is possible. Exactly. You can, you can a thousand percent make a VTuber, especially with snap cameras, body tracking and snap cameras, face tracking. You can have both of those AIs running at the same time using facial expressions to drive the head of your character and then using your body position and estimation to drive your, the body of your character. So let's jump into ZBrush. Um, so there's a lot of different ways of doing this. I'm going to go with a couple of really fun ways, <laughs> or at least fun for me. Um, the ZBrush is a fantastically powerful uh, program, but it comes at a cost. Uh, it's not cheap and it has one of the worst user interfaces, but they don't care because they know that their stuff is supreme. So they're just like, man, you'll deal with it, but it's okay. Um, we're gonna start off inside of uh, ZBrush and I found this reference human. It's a full body uh, character and we're gonna, we're gonna build that or at least start off. So here we are in ZBrush. Uh, I'm gonna turn on Arnac. It's a software that I run that shows all my keystrokes so that you're able to see what I'm pressing on screen. So let me just run Karnak real quick. Okay, so that should be on the background. Be able to see a little bit better on YouTube. Oh, we got some questions coming in. Um, Raphael says, so constructing a VTuber is technically possible. Yes, David Turk says, will this be similar to the Little Nas X costume that is live tracked onto the body? Exactly. David Turk is on the right idea, folks. So this is using the same technology that I made that suit, which by the way, about 700,000 people have tried on that suit that I made in Snap, which is crazy. But the thing I left out was I didn't do a lot of facial animation. The, the face of the person wearing Little Nas X suit doesn't track. I don't track any of your facial animations. I don't have any characters with this. So this one would be like, drive the body with your body, just like the Little Nas suit, and then drive the face of a, of a CG character with um, your own face. And then I'm gonna use a new material called Eraser, which uses AI to remove the human or remove the person entirely from the footage in real time so that you don't need a green screen or you can superimpose people. So many ideas, but it all starts with off with us getting a 3D model. So I'm going to open up a light box. It's um, up here and I'm going to start off with a tool called Z spheres. Z spheres are pretty sweet. They let you, um, sorry, I have to remember the hotkeys. Okay. So right click to drag around. we got our head reference there. So I'm going to start off and just kind of create the body of this thing. I'm going to block it out. I use the Z spheres to block. So if I go to the top here and create a little neck there, just move that up there. Use the scale tool to just do exactly that. Okay, E is scale. So it's going to be a neck. Let's go back to our draw tool. Um, we'll work on the head separately, of course. I'm just trying to block out the main forms of my character. Uh, this is going to be like the mid abdomen. So, I'm not familiar with my zoom tool right now. How do I zoom in and out? Is it control? Okay, control. Got it. Control zooms in and out. All right, so let's uh, scale this guy too. So this is a tool called Z spheres. When you press the letter A, it turns it into geometry, but I'm going to keep it in this kind of sphere mode while we build out our character. This is a really fast 
and secret, helpful way to build out your characters with not too much effort. I mean, you still need to build it, but um, I kind of see I'm working on the torso right here. Then I'm going to create little tubes for the legs. Grab that move tool. And you can kind of position things and move, move the spears around. And then that's kind of where the knees would go, roughly. Very roughly, of course. We're still in the blocking, very, very early blocking phase here. <laughs> um, please give it your iconic DA3 hairstyle, says Ernesto Lobo. Um, well, what I'm at, my, my plan first just to create just the body of the board ape, because since all 10,000 of them have the same body as a template, um, just creating that geometry will be enough for me to share my proof of concept. And I'm hoping to get the attention of board, board ape owners who then want me to make their avatar. And then I'll, I'll, I'll charge for that, of course. Um, but for my proof of concept, I just want to show the idea of like, what if you got to wear your board ape, the one that you spent a million dollars on, what if you got to wear it in your you know video calls and stuff? I think that alone already has a lot of value to people who, you know, people who are buying board apes already value digital assets. So they're kind of like, in my opinion, like the perfect, uh, one of the perfect audiences to try to reach with this concept. And that's kind of where my head's at is like, you know, how do you, how do you prove value? It's like, it's like targeted, you know, targeting audiences. I think they already understand the value of metaverse kind of thing, so it just makes sense to me. All right, so I'm kind of just working on the body there, and then I'm gonna probably keep the character in an A pose. I normally do T poses, but since I want to put clothing on this, which might be easier to rig, um, I'm gonna put it in A pose. A poses work better when you're doing digital fashion because the way that fabric bends around armpits is uh, usually kind of complicated so if you can manage to um, I'm sorry I gotta focus for a sec I think I made the head okay just gonna make it a little bit it's a little chubby we're gonna basically we're just using this to create our first bit of geometry but it's not gonna be used it's not gonna be the final so this is just what I'm using to block out my character um, but what I was saying is an A pose is really useful um, for clothing deformations. You still want to keep the arms and stuff pretty straight, but an A pose just helps uh, alleviate a lot of tension that normally happens around the bits and stuff. Box simulations, I find it easier. So I'm just kind of changing the proportions around a little bit, moving some legs together, trying to keep these in a pretty straight, pretty straight up pose here. The ankle back down. Create some toes. How many toes? Same. So they're not like cartoon characters exactly. Okay. So now I'm going to create a little bit of geometry to represent the head. So we're going to go to the Q. Actually, I don't see my car knife working. Let's see the hotkeys. That will be like the lower part of the face. And then I'll go above that. And this will be like its midsection. We'll go up that way for upper face. Okay. It doesn't look like a board ape yet, but we're mostly worrying about position and you know, uh, mostly caring about proportions and just generic, generic stuff. In geometry for ears. I'll connect them probably the back here. I'll reference this one. This image of the back of the head so I can see portions. 
looks like the neck actually connects. I'll have to kind of move this neck around. Oh, he has a little nose. Yeah, it's weird. It's actually a pretty wide. It's a pretty wide nose. I guess I'll attach the nose to. It's kind of right between the two. Maybe a little bit more on the upper face. You and create a little bit of nose geometry. But kind of widen it a little bit. I want to get that silhouette to be similar to this one. Um, I'm ignoring the hat and stuff for now because each board ape is given their own unique set of geometry. Oh, um, Xavier X2 says, is there any alternative to ZBrush for iPad? Definitely. There's a fantastic tool called Nomad Sculpt. If someone could type that in the, um, in the Instagram uh, stream, that would be really helpful. It's a great, it's a, it's a fantastic tool. And it's $15, I think, in the US right now. And it's very powerful. And, and it's like it's actually a great tool. You know, it's not a compromise or anything. It may not have Z spheres, but it's actually a lot more viable than people may realize at first glance when you think of, a, of an iPad app. It looks like the nose is going to be a lot bigger, but we can probably just push around the clay. Whoa, what happened there? It was weird. Like, brush to there. Let's see if we can bring it back. Not sure what's happening. Okay. Sometimes, sometimes these spheres act up, which you probably are seeing it do right now. Is the game. That's the game. Yeah, we're just trying to get those our base, our base proportions in there, you know. Uh, how is it looking so good already? Oh, wow. Thank you so much. Um, I don't think it looks good yet, but I think one little pro tip I can suggest when you're sculpting characters in AR or VR for NFTs, for commercials, for movies, is start off with the largest shapes, which is kind of why I love using the, uh, I love using this uh, Z Spheres tool because it forces you to only think about the biggest shapes before you, you know, do anything. You know, you can't really think of anything else when you're working on Z spheres. So it kind of, you know, we'll be going in, of course, with a super fine, fine comb, fine tooth comb. <laughs> I, think I, I think I butchered that uh, analogy, but we will be going over this with a really fine tooth comb, but it will be a lot easier if we start from locking out the character and really forcing us to stay focused on the largest shapes of our, of our character. Because we can totally sculpt all the details in after the fact, but what's really hard to change later is proportions without like you know, redoing your work. I, I try not to, I try to work in a process called um, uh, non-destructive workflows. And the, the key idea of non-destructive workflows is to work in a way where you don't have to repeat your 
steps a lot when a change is made. So actually I'm probably gonna make this neck cavity a little bit thinner, so I'm gonna scale it down. There. Might add a, might add a second shoulder bone. Hand. Looks like the hands go past the waist, so I might move the hands up a little bit here. Having some fun. You gotta do that. You gotta you gotta break it up. Can't just be doing monotonous steps all day. That's not fun. to something. Great little placeholder for thumb, fingers, three, that, move that thumb out over there. Now you might be thinking that this character is being rigged as we're doing this. And it turns out it is not. This sphere system that you're seeing here it's only useful for creating geometry. It's not uh, actually a rigging tool. It looks like rigging because you, you see that very familiar like bone icon that, that's a, you know, appearing in the in the columns, but it's actually not really a bone. It's all just um, this one's actually all just uh, geometry. It's like a it's like a, we're like looking at a preview. the width of this brush here. So it keeps moving too many other fingers. Actually, what am I doing? I'm probably going to use hand reference. I still struggle to sculpt hands, but I will be honest and say that the this this tool does help me sculpt fingers because I, I don't have to really think about them in excruciating detail right away. I can just focus on generic structural shapes. That looks all right. I mean, probably the scale is probably all weird, but I'll just kind of start off with that. Okay, let's just keep getting in the habit of saving this time. So I'm gonna to go to uh, File and then do Save As. I'm gonna make a new little directory in here. And I've saved this into a new folder. Call this Board Ape. Board Apes. Saving as we go. And we're just going to keep keep at it. Oh, we got some questions here on Instagram. It says I want to create face rigged animation characters in Spark VR. I don't understand how to link 3D face to real face expressions or how to create 2D animations canvas face which suits all skin colors. Gotcha. So the way that facial rigging works for their AR is they all use a technique called blend shapes. Um, Blender can do blend shapes, Maya can do blend shapes, Cinema 4D can do blend shapes. So I would start off there. I would start off googling creating blend shapes on a character. Um, I don't know of any, uh, what do you call it, uh, desktop, or I don't know of any mobile solutions to create blend shapes as of now. I think that's still a pretty heavily, um, uh, it's a pretty heavy task that usually a laptop or desktop needs as of now. I mean, I feel like that's going to change, of course, like everything does, but for now it still does require that. And, um, and what, and what you do with it is you create these, you create a single model and then you save it and you're happy with that model. And then what you do is you create a blend shape where you push just the same polygons of that model. You push it around to make every facial expression. So for example, what I'm gonna be doing with this character is first sculpting a high resolution version of the character. Then we're gonna take that character into VR and I'm gonna do retopology, where we're gonna essentially go over the entire model and reduce the polygons into the least amount needed to convey all the animation that I wanna get out of the face. Then we take that single piece of geometry and then we create blend shapes. 
So I would do a blend shape for left eye blink and right eye blink. Those would be two different blend shapes. And a blend shape is a value between zero and 100. And what we can do inside of Spark AR, Blend Studio, um, Unreal Engine, uh, Unity, uh, is we can, we can dial in that percentage of a blend shape with a control input. So in the case of Spark AR, you can actually control how much of a person's mouth is open. And me as a developer can take the mouth open percentage and use that to drive a blend shape slider. Whereas if it detects 0% mouth open, I'll have the blend shape for mouth open set to zero. And if it detects the camera seeing somebody open their mouth up to 100%, I will then take that, I'll match that value so that it gets 100%. And if you have a more stylized character that you don't want to move just like a human, you can add a multiplier in between there. So let's say I'm trying to have a human face drive a Pixar, a Pixar-esque uh, character. What I would do for that is, you know, maybe my mouth open one, you know, my mouth open as a human from zero to one is not going to be as dramatic as the mouth open for like a Pixar rig. So what I can do with Spark AR and then Studio is add a little multiplier in between it. So we'll say when, you know, so detect face, so detect human face, it has my face. Then I can say detect mouth open. So it's looking for that. And then I say, if mouth is open, multiply my mouth open times two of the blend shape of my character. And then that way, my mouth opening up a percentage will double that amount for the character that I'm pointing it to. Um, and that's, that's how you can, that's how you would do it. So you need to first make a model. You can't change the topology of your blend shape. So like you make one model and then every blend shape is you pushing and pulling that model into all the different faces that you want to make. Blink, left eye movement, you know, left pucker on the cheek, right pucker of the cheek, um, jaw left, jaw right, um, middle eyebrow up, middle eyebrow down, you have to basically do, there's about 51 of them. You want, if you're doing it for an iOS device, you have to make 51 blend shapes for every character. Um, that's, why, that's why you don't see people making VTubers all the time because of how taxing it normally is to build a custom character. That's why tools like MetaHuman for Unreal Engine exist, um, you know, where you can use all their blend shapes and the character's pre-made pretty much and all rigged and ready to go. So that you can focus on just like, you know, the most fun parts, <laughs> which is, you know, just, just, what do you call it? Um, lost my train of thought. I think you got, I think you got the idea though, right? Um, the eyes aren't that big. I don't know what I was doing there. Let me get this zoom in. Only problem with using every 3D program weekly is all of them have slightly different hotkeys. And so I get tripped up when I haven't used them for like a week of which one, uh, of which one is which. And delete that. I don't think we need those there. All right. Uh, let me see if there's any other quarter angles. Quarter turn angles are great because you can get to see other. Uh, perspectives. I think the ears are a little bit lower than the head image. Let me go. We'll have to really, be, we'll have to give this a lot more love and attention. Get that ear to, to look better. Looks like the jaws are a little bit wider, so I'm going to add another bone to the jaw here. Oops. Move that to the side. Is that one? Is that one or two sides? Okay, it's two. The blocking is amazing, says Ernesto Lobo on YouTube. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you very much. Yeah, the blocking, I mean, this is everything. Because honestly, once the blocking is done, then you're just, you're just having fun sculpting and adding all the details. But imagine if you just went straight into trying to sculpt the details, it's going to, it's going to cause problems for you because simply because 
it, it's a uh, sculpting is a, is actually a destructive workflow because you're making a change that's usually permanent unless you're doing it on a blend layer. On I'm sorry, on a morph layer, which is different than a blend shape. There's so many uh, terms here. I don't, I'm not trying to scare off scare off anybody, but that's just a, a lot of a lot of terms. Looks like the arms are a lot longer and skinnier, so I'm going to maybe reduce the width of the shoulders there and the elbows. Down, bring it down a bit. And take this one, whoa, take that up a little bit. Copy that, and I'll scale it down with the letter E. Move that. We'll move that thing a little bit there. Let's see, is there a wrist I can reference? Ah, no, no wrist. Okay, I should have gotten some wrist references, I'll have to guess. Uh, the arm's a lot longer. Well, it looks like there's multiple bones in the hand for that length, that length there. So I'm gonna grab this bone and kind of repose the whole hand. I'm gonna move that down. Whoa. into that hand there and I can now grab the lower hand bone with the wrist. I think I screwed up the hand. Let me go back. I'll do the hand separately or not at all. <laughs> I haven't decided yet. Hands are frustrating. Okay. Cool. I'm pretty happy with this blocking. Um, parts that I've ignored are the feet. Uh, I don't think I'm going to give them ape feet because I think I'm probably going to give them shoes. So, and also that will just avoid having the rig toes. Rigging fingers is already hard. I don't want to rig toes. No one's in, no one's wiggling their toes in AR right now. I say right now. That will change. They will wiggle the toes in AR eventually. For now, uh, that's a metric I don't really care too much about. So I'll just kind of uh, make this a little bit thicker and then move this around and scale the toe down and move that around. Go to the graphic side view. Heels as flat as I can with the floor. Uh, let's look at the ankle. Oh, actually, you know what we need? We need, that, we need that little mass of muscle that happens behind the calf. So I'm going to add a bone right here, and then we'll uh, scale it up with the E tool. And then we use Move tool to slide it backwards so we get a little bit more width in the back of the whatever. And then I'll do the same thing here, add another bone. And then we can now taper the ankle a bit and create a nice little ball the back of the foot to, to rest on. And then it looks like the calf is a little bit thicker up at the top. So let's go ahead and add a bone there. Go ahead and set the cube. Scale it up. Cool. Now I need to really care about ultimate proportions. What do I talk about? What am I talking about? Ultimate proportions. Well, we need to put this basically side by side and scale parts down uniquely. So when we put these side to side, you see how all the proportions are still pretty off. Um, like if I were to draw some vertical, sorry, some horizontal lines, we'd see that there's stuff is not lining up, which is great because now we can do that. Now we have the main. We have the main we have the main bits made. So now I'm just gonna focus on all the other stuff. Um, so let's move the hip height there, get the groin to be at about the same location. Let's get the knee height. And the 
Jest ci dobra, ja Okay. And then the head's looking too big, so we'll definitely need to scale that down. I'm also going to just scale down the neck by adding a bone here, and then scaling down that bone so we get a nice tapered neck. And then we'll move, move that bone down. And then I don't have a good way of scaling the whole head down that I know of right now. Yeah, I don't know a good way to do that. Legs back here so we can kind of flatten the angle. Can I scale the head down? Can you grab multiple of these at the same time? Let's grab scale and scale the neck. Oh, you can, you can just scale the neck. That's cool. So it looks like, oh, that's so helpful. Okay. All right, so that's getting a lot closer to proportions. I think the width of the body is a little too wide though. So I'm gonna scale the width down a bit. And I'll raise the shoulders up. It's looking really close. Then I'm gonna move my I'm gonna move my bone here. Move that whoops, move the elbow up. I'm having troubles grabbing the elbow. There we go. Move the elbow joint up here, and then we'll move whatever this thing is, the lower lower arm fat muscle. So that there. This is like a, where the wrist is supposed to begin. It's like another wrist joint. That's a hand, I guess. And let's go to the side of the calves, which is a little bit closer now. Oh, the neck is still too thick. Let's uh, shrink that thing. Smaller head, smaller neck, smaller neck. There we go. Okay, so now the proportions are looking really similar, which is great because I'll have to, I don't have a good way of um, flattening it out in the back, but I'm really happy with the proportions now. Um, I see the groin is breaking a little bit, so let's see if we can get a groin, a groin angle. Okay, it looks like there's not a diamond thigh gap here. So can I delete one of these? I don't know how to delete. Oh, that's cool. You just hold alt. That's so helpful. That's really, really helpful. Okay, so let's just get the thigh gap down a bit. And then let's see if the ultimate proportions are the same. Oh, okay, proportions. Almost there. I think I might just widen the um, legs apart a little bit here to get that T pose or more of an A pose. And then probably thicken the width, oops, the width of the leg here. I guess it's having trouble. I don't think it likes how I only have a a very small number of bones in the torso. So I'm going to add another bone. That way we can get the width of the waist down a little bit. And maybe we can move. Okay, there we go. That feels a little bit better. It's got a lot of a uh, back lump. We'll smooth that out once we're in the modeling phase. Uh, yes, yeah, sorry, we're using ZBrush right now. My apologies for not looking at the message. Uh, this is ZBrush. Um, I'm using not the full version of ZBrush. I just use, I just use the, the one that's second from the full version. The reason is I use Cinema 4D for like all the other features that it has that would only cover why you might want the full version of ZBrush. Um, oh, look at that. The ears are more on the side of the head. They're not behind. They're more on the side and more up, more up more of an up angle. We'll have to flatten out that sphere. I don't know how to swap these out with like cylinders or anything. I just end up doing it manually. Uh, let's do a quick save. Boom, boom, boom. Great. And let's fill the object. Take a look at our reference. Um, I think the arms, 
a little bit less muscular. Just a little bit. And maybe a little bit shorter, to be honest. So I'm going to scale this bone down. Make them have a little bigger waist. Scale the bones. I love the hierarchy structure where it actually scales down everything below a bone. If you grab a bone and hit the scale button, it scales all things down. That's pretty sweet. Um, I'm seeing some weird breaking happening around the top of the ear here. Or I guess the lower whatever that is. Whoa. Okay, the neck. The neck is struggling. It's trying to subtract. Trying to subtract some geometry out there. So let's see if we can maybe add some volume there. Ooh, that made it worse. Maybe I'll push that up. Whoa, hello. That kind of helps. I don't know why the head got so flat in the front though. The head is definitely curved. Actually, that should be easy because then we just have to add a ridge. You know, I can just do that. And, yeah, I'll just add the ridge manually. Gotta go, guys. Sorry, I can't stay. My son just woke up. Oh, we'll have a good, good morning or a good night, depending on where you are. Thanks for stopping by. This is live streaming to YouTube right now, so you can always watch it later. Bored apes. So, I mean, I'm pretty happy with the proportions. Let's just do another quick glance at the whole scale of this thing. Go to a front orthographic view, hit F to fill the frame, and then kind of eyeball it. I mean, I think this is pretty close. The main thing I'm seeing is just the, the legs are a little different. And move these like together. This is a little bit better. I might give the leg a little bit more thickness. So we'll go to E, scale them up. I just have to add muscle. Not a problem. I'm gonna redo the hands. I hate the way the hands are. <laughs> uh, oh, actually, you know what? We should do. We should give the hands a little bit more love and attention here. And what I mean by that is scaling them. So let me grab my move tool and try to move the fingers around till they're about the proper length. index finger, the middle finger. Okay, so the fingers are a little bit longer now. Let's go to a side orthographic view. Get these to be, uh, wish the influence wasn't so wide. Let me see if I can change that focal shifting so we can only just move one bone at a time. They just have like a very cartoony four fingers. Uh, I definitely want them to have more than that. And it might be a little bit easier to rig if I space out the fingers away from each other. So I'm just going to add a little bit more space between them. I don't like the way I model fingers and hands. Always room for improvement in that area. Uh, Ladina Battle says, you are amazing and so helpful. I help kids who are battling cancer create their own animated music videos while they are in the hospital and get chemo. 
Could you ever collaborate using a patient 3D? I mean, I may. I'm more like, like to help teach people how to use the tools for themselves. But if they ever want like a lesson in 3D, I'd be happy to jump on a Zoom call with them and show them some, some cool 3D tools they can do on like their phone or on an iPad or on a laptop. Um, yeah, send me a DM. I'd like to learn a bit more. Okay, so I added kind of the rough proportions of the fingers now. They feel like the right length, um, but you know, now they're like a little like daggery. <laughs> so I'm going to add little knuckles to split the difference. Where did that your finger go? Wait, how many knuckles do we have? Maybe just one right here. That might be enough. widen the knuckles a bit. This will be a very complicated process. Whoop, zoomed in the wrong spot. It's going to definitely be a pain to rig the fingers. I already am already kind of regretting doing an extra knuckle, but I want that possibility. For now, I'll just work on everything else. Ah, ah, hotkeys. F mesh, okay. So I think that gives us a pretty solid base to work off of. Um, I'm looking for like certain landmarks right now, making sure that the, I think mine are a little bit taller. I can think their torso and mine are a little bit shorter than theirs. Just a little bit. And maybe the elbows are, or not elbows, the shoulders are just a little, little up high. So I'm gonna maybe bring the shoulders down, kind of relax the arms a bit. Take a look at the mesh. Oh, it kind of messes up stuff. Okay, don't do that. So don't mess it up. Here we do. Windows button right there. It's in a very inconvenient spot. So you start pressing a different button there. Okay. No complaints. I'm happy. Okay. So, oh, I got a question. Don't forget to save your work done, says Matthew Convento on YouTube. I will go ahead and hit the quick save button. Thank you. <laughs> um, all right. So that's, that's probably enough for blocking. Enough for me to start to, to start doing stuff. So I hit the quick save button. I'm going to click on the sub tool and click on duplicate. And that way we have a poly mesh. So I'm gonna create a poly mesh. Whoa, what did that do? I mean, hide the Z spheres. Hit the A button. And now if we start sculpting, I have a, a, a Wacom uh, tablet right here we can start to add some clay. So I have a, there we go. Yeah, so we got our, our brushes and stuff. I'm going to go ahead and increase the draw size and uh, start work on the character. I'm going to start shaving away some of the details in the back here, just very lightly holding the Alt key to subtract geometry and then we can smooth it out. Holding Alt to subtract and then holding Shift to smooth. Holding Alt to subtract, holding Shift to smooth, holding Alt to subtract, holding Shift to smooth. I wonder if the board apes have tails. Do you think they have tails? Slash, do you think they should have tails? And I'll give them a little bit of a butt. Butt fat. I think they're going to be 
sing the butts of them too much, but in case they do, a little bit of butt fat. Back, this would be where your scapula thingy is, shoulder blades. Go to the legs here. It looks like the legs in their reference model are a little bit thicker on the upper thigh. So we're just going to add a little bit of uh, mass to the upper thigh there. Holding shift to smooth. Um, the brush that we're using right now is known as the clay build-up brush. It is great for adding mass to your models because it kind of just builds up geometry. It might be easier to see it in mesh mode. It keeps your mesh. If, you're, if you have DynaMesh turned off, it will keep your mesh, but it will still allow you to, um, uh, to kind of get a new shape out of your geometry. It's... Um, DynaMesh is, is, isn't needed yet because we're not sculpting high, high performance details. We're just sculpting like essential details at this point. Right, the, the, real, the real area of, of concern and interest for me is going to be the face. So let's, get, let's give some love and attention to face geometry since that's the area that uh, the bulk of the work is going to be focused on. So I'm going to start off first smoothing out this little cavity, adding some mass, smoothing it out. Cool. Then I'm going to go to the top of the head and add some rounding up in there. Then I'm going to reduce the brush size just a hair and start carving into the ears. And then holding shift to smooth. Then for the back, I'm going to switch to an H polish brush. Uh, I know we shouldn't be polishing yet. We're far from far from polishing, but this brush is great for just flattening things. I just wanted to flatten the back of the ears uh, a bit. Actually, maybe I'll use the move brush because that might be a little bit easier. Just move the pixels and then we'll smooth them. These pixels. And a little bit, maybe making it a little bit larger on the bottom, kind of just using that push and pull the ears. Let's do a quick save in case something crashes. Awesome, awesome. Let's jump into another reference to see if we can get closer to their face. This one's pretty good. Love how they did the nose there. So let's start sculpting that nose, making that thing come to life. I'm gonna grab my, um, my brush. I'm gonna turn on a thing called Sculptress Pro. Sculptress Pro actually adds resolution while you're, it adds polygons while you paint. So it's not recommended for early stages. It's a, it's a really good tool for when you're kind of where I'm at right now, where we're trying to sculpt more detail into the model. So this is a great, a very great tool for that. I'm just kind of following the forms that I see in the reference. That's kind of flat in the front and then it's kind of carved out in the inside here to give it some space to breathe. Um, be careful using Sculptress Pro because it is a, a lot heavier on the CPU when you're sculpting with it because it is making, it's, make, it's adding geometry. Every time you use Sculptress Pro, you're actually adding geometry um, to your model. It's not using the same topology, it's adding for high precision stuff like this, I also like to switch. Oh, wow, hello, welcome, welcome. Today we're making board apes into wearable NFTs. Oh, we got a bunch of questions on YouTube. Uh, we are streaming to YouTube right now, so please feel free to join me over there. This is where you can also watch it in full screen. We've got better microphone set up. Question from YouTube says, um, chimps do not have tails. Thank you, Ernesto Lobo. I will not give this board ape a tail. No tail. All right, David Turk says, Earlier, you mentioned a workflow step that will take place in VR. Is that happening in tonight's stream? Um, I think so. I think I have enough energy today to get this into VR. Um, the step that I'm referring to is called retopology. I'll write it here. Retopology. Uh, it's this. This is the retopology. So what it is is, um, in a nutshell, let me see a good example. 
This is a good example. So you see this image right here? Um, when you model stuff in ZBrush, it looks like this. It's super dense. So you get like these really, really dense polygons. And this is great for adding, oops, this is great for adding details, but it's horrible to paint later on. It's horrible to animate. Like if you try to animate this surface, it deforms really poorly and creates a lot of weird artifacts in your models. So this same model can be represented with a lot less polygons. Each of those squares is a polygon. And that is the process of retopology. It's creating a lower res version of the model. But retopology goes a step further. It's not just doing a polygon reduction. It's also creating a thing called edge flow and edge loops. So this example here is great. So this, this thing has 8 million polygons, which is absurd. It's a lot of detail. You see every little bump in this character. Whereas this one is made out of 946 polygons. What you can do inside of game engines and uh, 3D tools that we use for commercials, for movies, is you can project the 8 million polygon model onto this super low resolution model, and it gets you a much higher resolution result, but, not, but at a fraction of the computational cost. So in other words, when I do this process of um, retopology, I do this step in VR because it's better. I go in and basically, it's all like, you have to kind of like remodel your model, but the, the key is edge loops. So if you, this is really hard to explain with this image. Let me find a colored version of it. Oh, this is perfect. So this image here, I think, is going to do a better job at explaining what I'm talking about. The key to having the best retopology is a thing called edge flow. Every part of your body that needs to move should have a loop of polygons around it. So you see how in this eyeball here, the polygons make a nice, even loop around the eye. And then it expands to the face. Then when you look at the mouth, the mouth has very good topology around the lips and around all of these, all the areas of your face that need to move, the best type of topology is when you create this nice edge flow. If you don't do this and you try to just animate a character, you'll get really bad like bleeding and breaking of polygons uh, and textures that live across them will stretch and break and deform and take away somebody from, the, from your character. So I like to do my retopology process in VR with an application known as Gravity Sketch. It's fantastic. You can do retopology on a desktop, but I just find it a lot more fun and a lot faster to do it in VR. Um, based on how far we get today, I'll decide whether or not we have the time to do that. I would like to do that today, but I am also, I want to be realistic with time. I'm also waiting for an email from a customer. They have to review a, a thing I made for them today. And if I, get, if I get the email back from them that they're ready to move forward, then I will probably jump off and uh, focus on that for a big chunk of the day. But until I get that email from them, I'm gonna keep working on this and uh, showing the process. Because I'm actually doing pretty much the same process that I'm showing you right now for them, for the paid client. The difference is um, it's not on a board ape, it's on a character from a thing that hasn't been released yet. The thing could be a TV show, it could be a movie, it could be something that I can't talk about. So since I like to have education as a core part of the content that I make, um, the safest way I found to make educational content is to just do personal projects like this. This is not paid, but I can justify it because the, the paid project is happening at the same time. It's like simultaneously happening. So, um, but yeah, I'm using the same process that I'm showing you right now. I'm doing this to, to, their, to their model as well. It's just like, it's just going to be a, a, a character that you recognize from movie stuff. But, um, and also it's just good practice in general. Um, character modeling is very fun or stressful. It just depends on what kind of uh, person you are. Right, so I'm looking at the top view there. I'm going to use that move brush to uh, just kind of move the top a little bit here, flatten out the nose, maybe pull on that forward, pull on this a little bit, very gentle movements. The move brush is pretty precise in ZBrush, so I like to just do very soft movements with it. It just gently pulls on your model. You can hold space bar to quickly get to your resize options. That's how we put it quickly uh, smooth out all parts of the model. 
And then there's a nice brush in here called the um, crease brush. Um, I don't really use this until um, I don't really use this until we get into like fine details. Um, so give me one second. I'm just gonna carve that in there. Yeah, so you can use this to create like little creases and stuff into your model. And yeah, you can you know, create nice little creases into there. And I love doing that. But I usually like to save that tool towards the end. It's not good to use that too early because it adds a lot of polygons. And if you're on an older computer, that might, you know, may not be the best option right away. Oh, where's the mouse? Oh, sorry. My stylus was competing for the mouse control. Okay. All right. Next thing I want to do is start working on this lower mouth thing. So it looks like we're going to start off with the move brush, increase that size, and I'm just going to kind of expand it out a little bit, smooth it out at the same time. Bring that together, smooth it all out. I'm going to grab my draw brush and just expand that out there. on the model a little bit there. But yeah, what, what we're focusing on right now is creating the high resolution version of the thing. So this is not the model that's gonna be driven in the AI tools. This model is just gonna be, um, it's what I base all my textures on. So the key here is just to focus on getting it to look as good as we can in an A, in an a pose. And then we'll use that, we'll be using that data later. All right, so now I'm just gonna add some geometry to the back of the head, just kind of fill this up and then smooth it out. I'm gonna turn off Sculptress Pro for a moment. Just kind of add some muscles and stuff, smooth it all out. Another quick and easy way to smooth is to hold Control and then drag. Wait, or no, is it space and drag? Wait. Shift and drag. It's called Dynamesh. I forgot the hotkey for it. So it's, it's over here in geometry. Click on Dynamesh and I just click on uh, sub, sub D, Dynamesh. And Dynamesh, did it do it? I think it did. Oh yeah, so that just kind of adds a lot of resolution and stuff. Oh, I think I got a message to move forward on a project, hold on. Let me check my messages. I might have to postpone this, let's take a look. Uh, hey Don, just got off the phone with Blank. It looks like everything was approved to move move forward. Okay, sweet. Um, I'll just start messing back. I will get back to it in a little bit in the middle of a stream at the moment, period. Okay, cool. Yay, paid gig. Um, sometimes, you know, you wanna just make sure that the bills are being paid <laughs> before you just make fun free YouTube videos and, and, and tutorials all the time. Um, so that is definitely gonna help with the bills. Um, I'll probably be able to share more about that project uh, when it when it goes live. It's a really cool one. I'm just I'm still building stuff for it, so I can't really talk too much about it yet. But it is using a lot of the same principles. Uh, what you see me doing here is very much what I've already kind of done for a character for them. And then the difference is uh, theirs doesn't have to be driven in real time. This one I'm building so that it works in real time. Could be a tremendous amount of work to be honest to do this but it's it's important because i think i think it's gonna be fun and it'd be really cool if someone who owns a board ape sees this and then is like hey can you make that for me i'll give you x percent of the resale value of this thing in ethereum 
then it's like not even a financial burden to them. It means if it gets resold, then uh, I can basically make a commission on on the their board ape or something. But what's cool is all of them require this initial geometry. So yeah. Okay, let's get closer to the eyeballs. Um, to see the eyes they have a blindfold on it that's not helpful uh, but i can kind of see some details in there so let's get a nice and close size there awesome all right so this is going to be the ridge the ridge of the of the creature the nose ridge and then it looks like they have like a thing up there and then I'll smooth that out. Actually for this part I'm going to use Dynamesh. I want that extra resolution added there. Touch that brush a little bit. There we go. Smooth it out. I'm going to recess this into the head here. Smooth it out. Um, I, I'll probably do the eyelids in this phase, but the eyeballs, I'm gonna have it as a separate layer so that when someone's using this in their video calls, they'll, uh, I haven't tried this yet, so it might not work as planned, which happens all the time. But what my intention is, is to make it so that the eye, the eye position of the person wearing it will match. It's so like if you look left or right, it should, in theory, in theory, I should make it so, I, I intend on making it so that it actually moves according to how someone wearing it is driving it. Oh, interesting. Look at that. It looks like the, there's a little bit of mass around the side of the head and the nose, the nose holes are a lot larger. So I'm just going to use my mouse and keyboard for a second and just kind of manually push and pull the nose to make it a little bit more oval-like. If I can ellipse, more of an elliptical kind of shape in there. Uh, the middle of it is a little bit wider than I have. And then it goes up a little bit there. We got a little bit more rimmed nose there. Maybe kind of taper in that side, take that down. Cool. And then it looks like the side of the head has more mass in there. So I'm going to use the clay build up, just kind of fill up that volume and then smooth it out. So again, for those of you just joining, we're working on just the sculpture right now. And if we make good on time, then I will show you how I would take this sculpture into Gravity Sketch on an Oculus Quest 2 to then add, um, to, to, uh, to then do the retopology work. Retopology work being a crucial step to getting this to animate properly in AR. I'll, I'll do hair, we'll do surfacing later, way later. So I'm not, I'm not worrying about texture of anything at this point. Right now I'm just caring about the geometry and that it is maintaining uh, integrity to their reference. I've tried finding the FBX file that they're using for that model on the left. But it turns out you have to pay at least 45 grand to get it. <laughs> so I think what's going to be cool is if I do the marketing right on this, people might just reach out and say, hey, I want the board ape base model. And then this becomes another product. Metaverse. Another nice thing inside of um, ZBrush is the fact that you can turn any brush into an opposite of itself by holding the Alt key. So a brush that's adding geometry can then subtract geometry um, very quickly by adding the Alt modifier. Okay, I think I need to see I need to see a close up of the eyes. So let's just look at the actual board apes, the two D graphical versions. Okay, so I'm getting a better idea of it now. There we go. So I just want to see the eyes. Um, <clears throat> eyelids are super crucial here. 
I might want to model the eyelids at the separate layers so that we can actually know. I guess I'll model it as part of the face. Uh, I'm going to use my smoothing brush right now. I'm just smoothing out some of that geometry and then adding some of the same details that I'm seeing in the uh, reference. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. Uh, I'll smooth out this upper head ridge there just a tiny bit. Okay, and now we're going to use the grab brush. Ah, I'm debating, should we do the eyelids? Oh, says Don, we can't hear you. Oh, crap. I'm not sure what the problem is. Um, if you can't hear me on Instagram, I don't know. You might have to join me on, on YouTube. Uh, Aaron Stolovo says, remember to save. Oh, okay. You got it. Quick save. Done. Um, David Turk says, heck yeah, congrats on the green light, Don. Oh yeah, thank you so much. David Turk says, will you be release, releasing the model similar to how you released the Tesla bot? Um, I made a fun animation, the, the Tesla Nader on Instagram with your asset. We can't hear you on YouTube. Oh, you can't hear on YouTube? That's so weird. My microphone is still on. Testing. Can't hear on YouTube. Stop streaming. I don't know. It says the microphone's still on. We can hear you on YouTube. Oh, sorry. Gotcha. Thank you. Um, I'm just going to say go to YouTube. Go to YouTube for sound. Audio. Gonna, I'm going to end the stream on Instagram, or maybe just restart it. Okay, sorry about that. Uh, oh, see, so you can't hear you. Uh, so yeah, in this case, I don't think I'm going to release this model um, as of now. I might change my mind about that, but for right now, that's not my intention with this one. Mostly because uh, for this one, I want to—I actually want to do this as a paid service. Um, so as of right now, it's just because, like, right now, if I wanted the same model, I'd have to pay forty-five grand to get it. Uh, so, I'm not—I I'm, don't really want to share that right away. Um, but again, I might change my mind. But as of now. My mind is not changing. <laughs> uh, I, I'm, I give, I'm giving this, a, you know, this deep dive breakdown of every step. So with every tool. So my expectation is that if you want this, you can make it yourself. In this case. All right, I'm going to move the ears up a lot. You stream on to Instagram, looks like it broke. Use the standard brush here to just carve a little bit into the side of the ears. Why well, it's hard to smooth out this part of the face. It's not it's not smoothing out anymore. Uh, let me just go to dynamic topology. Oh, there we go. There we go. I'm going to use the inflate brush just to gently inflate the outer part of the nose here and some of the other parts. I'm 
Let's just use an H polish for a moment. Get that bag of dollar signs. Oh. <laughs> In this case, yeah, because it's like, I'm, I'm trying to suggest a whole new product category. You know, like it's fun to collect your NFTs and put it as your profile photo. But what if you could do all your video calls like this? You get to become this board ape. That's a whole product of virtual VTubering that I would like to offer as a service. And also, I know for a fact that it's very hard to get this to work properly for characters that are not exactly human. It's a lot easier to get these to work for characters that are humanoid because humanoid characters have similar facial reconstructions, but there's definitely not going to be, for now, a lot of people that can offer this um, in, in this form factor. I want to show them that it's possible and that if you want it, you gotta, <laughs> you gotta pay. Or you can just follow the tutorials and make it yourself. Every step is in here. Every little nudge, every little push and pull of the geometry, it's all in here. Okay, let's work on the mouth opening. Let's see, there we go, that's a good close up example. All right, so let's just do a little carve out first. Um, so I'll grab my play build up brush. I'm going to reduce the brush size a bit and increase that focal shifting. Then we can hold alt to subtract. And I'm just going to create a little uh, depression in there. Then we're going to hold shift to smooth it out on the inside. And then I'm going to hold alt to carve back into it again and hold shift to smooth. Then I'm going to hold Alt to carve into the sides, creating a little bit of a tongue appearance. Alt. Get in there. I'm going to change the focal shifting so it's a little bit sharper of a brush. Holding Alt, carving in there. Holding Shift to smooth. Holding Alt. Okay, it looks like there's a little bit of a lip. I'm gonna use the standard brush for this one and just kind of gently go around the outsides of the mouth to create a little bit of a lip around everything. Then I'm gonna go in with the, uh, the damn standard brush to add a little bit of a crease and then smooth it out. I don't like the way the mouth came out there, to be honest. Yeah, I don't like the way the mouth came out at all. Uh, let me try to close it maybe a bit, might help. It will be easier to rig if I keep it open. 
So I'm, I am going to try to keep the mouth a little bit more open than I would hope it to be, but it would just be easier to rig if it's a little bit more open. It's a lot harder to rig stuff when it's closed. Okay, I'm gonna grab my clay buildup, create some chest. Does it even have a chest? I don't even know. Oh, looks like it doesn't really have a chest. Cause I guess they're normally wearing clothes. Um, Yeah, I'll just create a little bit of form. Oh, yeah. All right, I think I need to bring the eyes a lot closer together. That's the issue I'm facing right now. So I'm gonna start the stream again. And it's getting a little toasty in my room. So I might turn on the fan. Right, welcome back. We are still working on the Bored Apes uh, NFT wearable AR fashion. We're gonna make it so you can wear an ape in real time in your video calls. Right now we're still in the early phases of sculpting the ape and uh, that's kind of where we're, where we're at right now. I'm still sculpting away, so we'll just continue on. I'll just uh, make a little note here. We are currently live streaming to YouTube. And I'll just put, um, this is Bored Apes AR Wearable NFT. I'll just pin that here on Instagram and we'll continue on. We've got a question from Ernesto Lobo it says, would it be too much to ask to give this ape a little more booty? Um, I mean, I don't think that's too much to ask, but I don't have any booty references for the character. How much more booty? I guess it doesn't really have a booty at all. Well, we can start off with giving it a, a crack. So I'm just going to use the, the damn standard brush to create a booty. And then we'll use the clay buildup brush to add some booty mass to the sides and then the smoothing brush. And there you have it. Now we have a booty on the board apes. There you go. Ape booty size. Yeah, that's an ape, that's an ape booty. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see, is there a groin reference? Not really. Um, cause right now it shouldn't be a, a, a compression in there. So I'll just kind of add a little bit of a stomach here and then smooth out that geometry. Um, one hack for sculpting more accurately is to use reference. So if you're ever in doubt with your sculpture and you want it to appear more accurate, and actually you don't even need it for fake characters or stylized characters. Like I use reference of real anatomy all the time, even for um, completely CG characters that aren't based off of, you know, living humans. Um, you know, even dragons, like when we, when our modelers would, you know, when I was working at DreamWorks and we do models of like dragons and stuff. Um, since, you know, we don't really have any real reference of dragons, right? So the, the way you, you model a dragon is you base it off of things that do exist. Um, for anyone who's watched the DreamWorks movies, uh, How to Train Your Dragon, when we were working on those, what would make people believe, I guess, like the movements and the behaviors of the dragons is they actually weren't based off of lizards at all. They were based off of cats and dogs because people already love cats and dogs quite a lot. So a lot of the dragons in How to Train Your Dragon are more based, are more cat-like, and it's a cat dog. Kind of took some of the things that people love about cats and dogs, and then you built that into the anatomy of how the characters are sculpted and rigged, and all of a sudden the thing feels like, you know, something that you're familiar with. Um, if we made it feel like a lizard, you know, there's no offense to lizards. Lizards are awesome, but there's slightly less appeal on lizards than there are cats and dogs. 
So creating reference, referencing anatomy of a cat and dog was helpful to make a dragon. It's like the kind of stuff you don't think about, but if you're working at an animation studio, that's, that's all you think about. How do we tell a story with, um, that's familiar to people, people care about, and that's definitely one way. All right, so boarding. Yeah, Toothless reminds me of my dog. Now I know why. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, because it, it is based off a of dog, you know. Certain movements, like, I think we would switch off and off them. And also another thing is, you know, we kind of study like bats, how bats um, take off. Because it's like, it's like a cat and dog that has to fly. It's so fun. It was so much fun to see the, the thinking of it. So much review of anatomy and animals and stuff like that. All right, so right now I'm using the, uh, this brush called the Dam Standard Brush, which essentially creates like flat planes based off of your um, stroke angle. Um, I'm doing this because I want the character to stay stylized. I'm not actually trying to go for photorealism here. I want this to feel kind of like the cartoon that people purchased. The NFT they bought is very cartoon-like. It's not like a photorealistic um, ape. If, if that was the case, I would have started off with a photorealistic ape. As a, as a starting point. Um, so I just noticed in a lot of video games where they have more stylized artwork, they flatten out things that normally wouldn't be flat. Sure thing. Multitasking here. Mm -hmm. Let's continue on this board ape stylizing. So in fact, I'm going to stylize the butt by creating flat planes for the butt. I'm going to get rid of some of the more organic structures and make them more stylized surfaces. And do that for the knees, keep those like that. And then we can go to our brush width if we want to keep it the height density. I just want a slightly sharper angle, angle in there. Oh, I forgot, I accidentally gave him four fingers. Whoops. We'll need to probably add um, another finger in there too. Oh, pro tip. Um, one way you can make characters feel, feel more human is by adding these little lines in the neck. We have these tendons that kind of go um, and keep your head on, and they're like in a V-shape. Um, if you add this to your models, even if it's a texture like with a normal map or something, um, it just makes you feel like the thing is a bit more human because all humans have this, this muscle group here. You can also always study yourself. Like I'm feeling like my collarbone is kind of up here. Let's move that out. Well, it actually came out too high. I'm going to reduce the Z intensity. Just create a, oh, maybe I reduced it too much. Yeah, I actually normally keep a little reference of anatomy as a separate image that I usually keep um, on me. 
uh, when I'm sculpting stuff. I don't have it on me right now, but I do recommend that if you're just getting familiar with sculpting and stuff for the first time, uh, you want to just reference nature. Nature's already solved everything. Nature has already solved the best way to sculpt everything. So just reference nature for all of your design questions. Um, it will have an answer. Cool. All right. Um, eyes. You need to get these eyes. Eyes are so important. So looking at this now, I'm noticing that the eyes are not so high up in the face. In fact, the eyes are closer to the nose than I first imagined. So we could start off by moving these eyes by using our move brush. So I can just kind of make these little push and pull motions to get the eyes a little bit closer to that spot. And it looks like the eyes are um, slightly less wide than the nose. Um, I don't want the character to look sad though. Still want to keep that, eyebrow, uh, that high up eyebrow ridge. There we go. Yeah, and then let's grab our clay buildup make the brush size a little bit smaller. That kind of set up there, we're just kind of um, you know, create that little form. To make the eyes a little bit smaller, so I'm going to grab my move brush, make that draw size a tiny bit bigger. Just keep you know, wedging these eyes a little bit closer together. Again, referencing the fact that the eyes at a flat angle should be pretty much squared up with the nose. Oh, let's do a quick save. How will you be tackling the fur gone? Great question. Uh, I'm not going to do real time fur. So, in other words, I'm not tackling it. Um, I don't trust the quality of fur simulations. Um, I'll just do a shader that has fur qualities to it. Um, it will have like some kind of movement, but it won't be actual fur dynamics. And the other part is I'll stylize other areas of it so that some of the fur that you'll see inside of the AR filter that I make will be um, just baked into the model. I'll sculpt fur right onto the model here. That's that's how I'm going to deal with that for now. Unless, you know, between now and then, if I find a better solution, I'll, I'll do that. But for now, that's kind of what I'm thinking. Uh, it looks like the eyes are a little recessed too far back, so I'm going to maybe pull that forward and maybe smooth out the side of the head there a bit. The forehead got all bumpy. I'm going to smooth that out a little bit. Grab our 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 uh, H plus brush and create some little flat edges here. Make the brush size a little bit smaller. Go in from the top, just flatten some of the ridges up a little bit. Another quick save. Okay. Um, new problem I'm noticing is now the eyes, the eyes in here, I guess there's like, there is still a kind of a large mass that I'm missing at the top of the head, top of the face, I guess. It's like, it kind of comes up to increase the draw size. Uh, it kind of increases up to there and then it recesses down that way so it's kind of like a whole a whole mass up there I'm 
try to deal with that mass up at the top. I'll use the regular standard brush because it's a little bit softer in its movements. I might reduce that Z intensity so it doesn't increase the height so quickly. This is good for creating little lumps and mounds that feel a lot smoother and organic. Kind of like the feeling I'm getting from looking at that reference there. You always want to rotate your model all the time. And you also want to get in the habit of zooming in and out of your model also all the time. So that you're not missing, you're not missing the big picture or getting too caught up in the details. Adding a little bit more mass to the cheeks there, and then kind of blending it in smoothly with the lower face. I'm liking the way this is coming out. Let's see how it compares to our reference. Um, looks like they all have a little bit more of a split down the middle of their face. I might accentuate the one that I have a bit more. And also they have um, a second crease in the inner ear that might be useful to sculpt into there. So I'll do that the ear thing first. So I'll start off with kind of just smoothing out the inside of the ear, adding some polygons. Then we'll grab the damn standard brush and carve that shape into the top part of the ear and make sure it kind of brings it around. Then we carve right into the inside of that ear and then right underneath it. Then to sharpen it, we grab the pinch brush and I can just pinch these details together. And then we create that kind of stylized inner ear by using the guides of the reference artwork as our guide. Uh, then let's do the same idea with the nose. It looks like they're, they do kind of have not as flat of a nose as I imagined. So we'll grab our standard brush and I'll kind of just reduce that size, maybe increase that Z intensity. That's, how, that's like how strong the uh, brush comes on. I'm just gonna kind of round out some of these areas. I know I flattened them earlier, but now I'm thinking let's round them out a little bit. And then widen that ridge. And that feels much better. I might make the nose a, a bit deeper. So I will use the H polish brush on the inside of the nose to kind of flatten the top. Uh, no, actually, I'll take it back. Let's go back. Uh, we're going to maybe carve into the nose with the clay buildup. Circles, and then holding shift to smooth. Clay build up on the nose there. Sometimes when I'm sculpting the inside of a nose, it makes me want to sneeze. Is that weird? So adding a little bit of that, a little bit of this, a little bit of that. Um, I do think I need to sculpt an eyelid now. Um, let me put the eyeballs actually in here. So to do the eyeballs, let's do a quick save. To do the eyeballs, I'm going to hit F to fill up my frame. And I'll just do it with a sphere. So I'm going to click on the append and then add a sphere. And if we go to our move brush, we can actually scale that sphere down. Oops, wrong layer. Make sure our sphere is selected and we'll scale that sphere down. And then in the 2D view, just place the sphere in line with where my eyeball should go. And then we just fill it inside of the head of our character. The eyeballs are a lot larger than I thought, so I'm gonna push that in there. Um, I do recommend keeping your eyeballs as a separate object like I'm doing here. Um, don't get into the habit of um, of baking an eyeball into the head mesh because unless you don't want the eyes to move independently. I want to later have the option to make it so that the person wearing the AR filter will be able to move the eyes. And only way I can do that comfortably is if the eyeballs are separate pieces of geometry. And now once the eyeballs are in, we can go back to our face mesh and sculpt around our eyes. So as you can imagine, that really helps when you're building your characters and stuff and you're doing facial animation. 
if you build out your, if you place your eye in there, you can, you know, start sculpting around the eye. Now I can use the damn standard brush to create that nice crease above the eye like they have in the reference. Now we're getting something that's a lot more on model uh, than before. Um, adding a, it says maybe adding the spheres in the eyes isn't help, isn't help you follow the shape of the lid. How will you be tackling the fur dawn? Oh, it's the same question, sorry. Um, I think I missed your question, but I think you're right. Yeah, put, placing an eyeball in there is always helpful at, you know, the next steps. Right now I'm just tapering the eyelid so it kind of goes a little bit more to a, uh, an edge, a little bit more. It's materiality as well. Also still keeps and maintains that stylized look. Bring that corner in a bit into the inwards. Yeah, keep it nice and white. And then maybe I'll push and pull the We'll push the um, oops. What I might do instead is push the push this inwards a bit. So I'm going to increase that drawing size here and just kind of push that lower eyelid a little bit closer towards the face, and then just kind of squeeze the face in. Maybe going in with a slightly larger, well, way too large, slightly larger um, move brush just to move that whole face in so that our eyes aren't just popping out or aren't too sunken in, sorry. Yeah, I'm just trying to get those eyes in there. Oh, we got a question coming in from David Turk on YouTube says, Gotta hop off. Thanks again for the awesome live stream and Don, the knowledge you share is much appreciated. Oh wow, thank you so much for hopping on, David. I really I really appreciate you being here and helping make this space something that people are interested in. So thank you, uh, thank you so much. But yeah, this is being streamed to YouTube right now for those of you that are still here. So um, if you want the full version where you can see every button on the desktop more clearly uh, and better audio, this will be saved onto my YouTube channel. I am trying to put a little bit more effort into YouTube since it's such an awesome educational tool. So um, please, uh, you know, take a look if you get the chance um, and share it. Let's get more people into the metaverse. I want to see a lot more genders in the metaverse and in the XR industries in general. I also want to see a lot more cultures enter into the space. Otherwise, we're just going to make recreate the same boring um, universe that we have at times. We just have the same people making the same experiences for the same narrow audiences. That's not a fun metaverse. That's just reality. Okay, let's go ahead and uh, shift the focus to the back of the ear here, smoothing it out, flattening it a bit. All right, let's take another look at the whatever this is, the front upper nose. And I'm going to smooth that out for a moment and then create a little cut into it. So using the standard brush, I'm going to hold the Alt key and just kind of holding a gentle, just gently, very gently adding a compression in there. Then we add a pinch brush to just pinch those together. This creates a nice little fine, subtle shape that creates that um, whatever. I don't even know what it's called. I should know what the anatomy is, but you know, no, I don't. I don't know it. Um, again, you might be wondering why am I keeping the mouth open of the character? Um, it's because I'm going to be rig rigging this character. We're going to be rigging the face, and we're going to make it so that you can drive this character through Snapchat um, or using any snap camera, so that you can wear this in a video call, so that um, 
and, and my goal is to try to get this seen by the actual people who bought these things, who bought these board apes from OpenSea over the last few months for hundreds of thousands, if not in some cases, millions of dollars. I want to have them see this. So I'm putting all the love and attention to here for multiple reasons. One is it's fun. It's very fun. Two is, well, actually, you know what I'm going to do? I think I'm going to bake the teeth. Should we bake the teeth into the mouth? Or should we keep it easy on ourselves? No teeth. Teeth are not fun to rig for me, to be honest. They're really not fun because you see the teeth. I mean, they look awesome to have teeth. But it looks like most of the board apes have their mouth closed. I'm like, you know what? I'm not going to do it. I might just bake the teeth. We'll create some fake teeth, prosthetic teeth. I'm going to put some teeth in here. That was a whole whirlwind of emotions. Um, so one way to do this easily is to use the alt. No, not alt. Uh, they have a brush near called mask. I think it's if you hold shift. No, control. There it is. So if you hold control, you can create a little mask. So first off, I don't even know how many teeth do they have. Oh, it's like four big teeth in the front. Cool. So I'm going to go in here and create a mask. So holding control, you just draw these little dark areas. And these are going to be where I'm going to grow teeth out of. To invert a mask, you hold control, and I think you click the background. So that inverts your mask. Now, whatever you do is only going to influence the things that are visible like this. And I can grab something like the um, clay buildup brush from earlier and just add a little bit of uh, geometry to these uh, teeth. And can smooth them out. wider there and just continue to smooth it out. I don't want them to be sharp in any way, but I do want them to be flat. So I'm going to use the H polish brush to flatten out those teeth. And then I'll try to smooth the back of the teeth as well. All right, so we made those teeth, and now to unselect, I think you hold control and drag a rectangle. Terrible UI, but it works. So now I've got some teeth in there. Uh, looks like the teeth are a little bit closer together, so I might do that. I'm going to grab the move brush and just kind of rectangularize these teeth. Nice and wedged wedging the teeth together, getting that rectangular vibe. Yep, 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 yep. Very gently. And then we'll grab our H polish brush, make it even smaller, shloop, and then we can just go over it and really flatten the front so that light will hit it different. Because, yeah, teeth are made of a different texture than your skin. So they should have a different way that light hits it. And so by flattening the teeth in these areas, we'll get a different kind of reflection index. Whoa, I just accidentally scaled it up. Oh, no, what'd I do? There we go. All right, we've got some questions coming up on YouTube. Let me take a look at the comments. One question says, got um, from Hourglass Crypto, says, we are... At the very beginning of this, keep killing it, Don. This video of you making the ape will also be an NFT with it. Whoa! I didn't even think about that. You're right. Making the NFT can be an NFT of itself. <laughs> I love the metaverse. I love meta everything. Uh, Ernesto Lobo says, question, are the teeth made from the same body? Wouldn't it be better to have them on their own body? Excellent question. So the re so that was that's really the debate that I was having the the little internal dialogue I had was asking myself if I wanted to have them separate. So since I was being a little lazy, I thought it might be easier for me just to do all the pose morphs with the teeth a part of the body mesh. Um, it will be easier for me to just take all that geometry and blend it together. 
if I was going to mostly drive this character in a in a baked animation kind of way where we do all the animation in Cinema 4D, then I would want the teeth separate from the body so that we can move the teeth independently. We might be kicking ourselves in the face by fusing the teeth together like this, but it might make it easier to work in AR, which is what I want it to do. I want, I want to be able to drive this character, performance of the character. I want to be able to drive it in AR. And in general, when you have all your meshes separated in AR, um, most applications will punish you for that. You don't, you don't get the friendly, you don't get the friendly treatment if your models are separated. So it's like, you know, if we're going, since I'm going for a more real time end result, in my case, I think it was safer to fuse the teeth to the body so that uh, it doesn't have to think too much. The exception of course, is the eyes. Um, but I have a separate tool for doing eyes that is a lot easier than teeth. It's really hard to, to, to have stuff baked into your mouth in AR. Because everyone's mouth shape is so different, but eyes are generally speaking in the same spot. Or eyes, I feel like are more similar across people than their mouths. Personal observation, I don't know if I have evidence to support that. Okay, uh, let's grab the pinch brush. And I'm gonna pinch the inside of the nose here, oops. Let's lower the uh, focal influence, focal shifting. Let's just taper the inside there so it's a little bit thinner as it gets towards the inner nose. And then we'll smooth that out in the back there. I'm gonna smooth that corner. Great. All right, I'm gonna create some little lines using the damn standard. Shablam, whoa, too sharp. Let's go in with a little bit more, whoa, hello, whoa, lost my focus there. Let's get in a nice little line. I'll grab the pinch brush, I'm just gonna pinch these lines together. Yeah, it feels good. All right. Board apes on their way. Let's give it another quick save. We got a question from Ernesto Lobo. Um, says, oh, okay, that makes sense. Um, sense. I remember always seeing video game glitching out when people's face glitches. You can see the characters, dentures, and their eyes, ha ha ha, which means they're different bodies, but it makes sense for AR then. And that's a great observation. When you see a game glitch, that's an awesome learning moment for how CGI works because when when a game glitches, you get to see the exact limitation of what is possible um, with uh, with something with with three D of the time. And so when you see a character glitch out in a game and the eyes pop out of the head, that usually means they are allowing the character's eyes to rotate more freely. So it's a, it's usually easier to do that in games if they're like a separate piece of geometry which is very similar to AR, but I, I, want, I want to drive this character with dialogue so that when you move your mouth and stuff, it's going to actually move the character's mouth. That's going to be hard, but it's going to be fun. I'm not trying to finish this in one day, but I do want to get, you know, a big chunk of it done. I still got to do some customer work today. I'm not bummed about it or anything. It's just that kind of had like this gold. I didn't know if they were going to get back to me so soon. So I kind of planned out my day to focus mostly on this that you see here. And then now seeing that, that they did green light, green light stuff, I'm going to need to give that a lot more love and attention for the evening and late, and late afternoon. I think my favorite brush in um, ZBrush is the clay buildup. It's a, it's like, I use it all the time. It's just so great just to throw some mass on there and then smooth it out. I just freaking love it. It's like the, it's my favorite brush in the whole thing.
Okay, I think that looks like the back of the head. I think, uh, Mr. Alan Alan J says you are really great, bro. Oh wow, thank you so much, uh, Mr. Alan J. Appreciate that. Okay, so I think the back of the head's looking all right. Um, I, I like kind of keeping the edges sharp like this on the back of the ear to feel more like you know like a cartoon illustration versus an actual ape. All right, let's take a look at the actual Board Apes collection. What are we missing? We've got the eyelids now. Oh, actually, you know what I might do? I might make the lip, the lip um, separation a bit more defined. So in their lips, they have a bit more of a crease in the bottom. I mean, we kind of have a crease, but maybe I'll just make it, maybe we'll just use the pinch brush with a really tiny, diameter and just pinch around there to sharpen up that edge. Yeah, just something like that. And then we can use the damn standard brush to carve it in a little bit more. Yeah, just a little. And then we'll grab the pinch brush and just do the same thing, just pinching around the edges. Smooth out some stuff underneath the chin. I'll use the damn standard brush to gently, 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 gently. Whoa, did I just click? It was weird. Um, just gently carve around the top of the nose here. Now we'll grab the pinch brush to gently pinch those back together. And we'll grab a regular standard brush just to add a little bit more volume to the front lips. Cool. All right, I think this character, I think this is pretty good for what I needed to do. Uh, let me just take a look back at the full body reference. You know, I'm just trying to get the whole scale in mind make sure that we didn't deviate too far. I know we've given no love or any attention to the hands or feet. Maybe now is the time to look at the hands. Oof, hands. Uh, also, I only gave them four fingers because I was being silly. But we probably need, well, actually, you know what? You don't know how many fingers the board apes have. Oh, no, we do because they send them to me. All right, let's work on the fingers. Have a great day. I'm going to bounce my phone. I'll talk to you later. All right. Well, thank you so much. Um, I think what we'll, what we'll finish up with here is the fingers. And I'm not doing the feet. I hate feet. I hate modeling feet. They're just hard. Um, wait, where, do we, where should we add another finger? Let's see. I guess we can add a finger right in the middle here. So I'm going to use the snake hook brush to pull out. A finger. It's hard to get the angle right here. 3D. It's the kind of thing that would be helpful to do in AR or in VR, sorry. And then we'll just inflate the finger here. And there we go. We got another finger. Add it to our model. Let's see if it worked on the other side. Yeah, we got it. And then I'm gonna smooth it out. A little bit more inflation there. Then we'll click on the the masking tool to create a mask around the finger. Then we'll invert that mask. And now we can use the, the move brush with a larger diameter to just move that finger into place, bone by bone. Grab the inflate brush to keep that inflation proper. I'll grab the move brush again. Make it larger to pull on the finger. And deselect. I'll grab 
the pinch brush to pinch the end. Whoa. Kind of smooth that all in there. Cool. And then we'll grab the clay buildup, create some little knuckles. Got a little knuckle. And last but not least, I'll use the H polish brush to create some flat vector looking shapes. A little bit too small, you increase the brush size a little too big. Cool. All right, so what we're doing for those of you just joining is um, Bored Apes are this really awesome uh, collection of 10,000 different ape drawings like these, or these are some of them. And people are buying them, using them as avatars, uh, as profile photos. And what I'm gonna do is turn, turn some of them into characters that you can drive in real time in uh, Snapback. Uh, or in your video calls for that matter. So you can be in a video call in my future idea here. And then what I'm you know, imagining is you'll, you'll be able to, um, sorry, I lost my train of thought. Let me get a little bit bigger, more cartoony in there. So I have a little more real estate to paint some cool designs on the eye, which means I'll delete this eye somehow. I delete that, select the layer. And then click delete. It's easy. And I'll grab this and hit duplicate. And then we'll take the duplicate, the duplicated one, go to our invert move, and just slide that right here. There we go. So a little bit bigger eyes will be fun to paint. Great. Oops. Great. All right, I think we're done. Uh, Cause I'm not doing the feet. Forget about it. We don't see the feet. I, I just mostly care about the face. That's the thing that I wanted to have be the most vulnerable. Wow, it looks like it's a little bit more angular in the lower jaw there. So let's grab that face, grab the move brush, go with a large uh, diameter. And I'm just going to gently pull on the cheeks to make it slightly more angular on the sides. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe go back on that a little bit there, too. Yeah, that feels, that feels about right. Let's go ahead and try that quarter angle. Quarter angle. Oh, yeah, I forgot. I wanted to model hair into it. Yeah, 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 yeah. So let's model some hair right into the thing. The best way I can think of doing this is to use the snake hook and then to use the H polish brush. So let's grab the snake hook and then just pull on some hairs. Oops, I think the snake hook made it a lot smaller.
all come out of the same little tuft. Oh yeah, they have like a little thing at the top. Let's turn off symmetry for this part actually. So let's go to tools, turn off, wait, transform tools, and that's this. Turn off symmetry. It's full on the hair. Oops. Bam. Nope. Uh, let's make it smaller. There we go. Hey, love. Oh, wow. Thank you so much. You're so welcome. <laughs> <laughs> Yay. Please. Uh, right now, we're using ZBrush. That's what we've been doing all the modeling in today. And, um, oh, yeah, Reezy, you know it. Yeah, this is a. Uh, Actually, I'm almost done modeling it. So I was just going to work on this base form. And my goal will be to just try to, at least for now, um, well, we're doing the sculpture work in detail right now. Uh, right now, I'm working on the little hairs on the top of the head. And then the plan will be to um, to do some retopology work, retopology work on, on this model. And then that retopologized model is what will take into the real time AR stuff. And let me just go into the side here, look at how they do the hair on the side of the face. Yeah, I might just flatten it out a little bit, slash sharpen it. So let me just get that a little bit sharper on the edges. I actually didn't sharpen it. Let me use the pinch brush. Just pinch the ends of the hairs. Make it a little bit sharper. Draw size. Let's increase that width. Whoa, too much. Sharpening it. Sharpening it. And then we'll grab the H polish brush to create really sharp, flat shards of hair. Right now we don't have um, symmetry turned on, so that we can create some friendly asymmetry into the model. For those of you that are tuning in here on Instagram, I want to let you know that we are live streaming to YouTube right now. And also, I want to do a little plug. Uh, you should join me in Adobe Max this year. I'll be speaking, have a whole presentation about making stuff for AR, full on asset pipeline using only Adobe products. And if you're interested in this kind of stuff and you're trying to get into XR, I think it's a great spot to start. It is free to sign up and, uh, for a session at Adobe Max. And, uh, and it's fun. So if this stuff is of any interest to you, which I think if you're here, it probably is, then uh, consider running us over on the other platforms and stuff. See you at max. I'm gonna continue streaming, but just wanted to do a little plug there. Okay. Uh, Reezy Resell says, wow, you've exceeded my expectations. Oh, wow, thank you so much. <laughs> wow. That's, that's really nice. Well, I mean, I love this 3D stuff all the way to its core. You know, it's something that, it, for me, it's like everything. Or a big part of everything. All right, so I just switched on the H polish brush so that we can create some little flat edges in here. Um, I'm, I create these flat edges because I still want the character to not be photorealistic. I want it to feel like the stylized characters that people purchased which, you know, an easy way to create some stylization is by using shapes that don't really occur in nature too much, which is like flat stuff. So just adding little flat vec uh, vectory looking shapes um, helps, helps a little bit with that um, non-organic look. Grab that pinch brush, make that a little bit smaller width and just kind of sharpen the, the eye line right there. Paper it a bit, maybe grab that move brush, increase that brush size. Want to make them a little bit more bored. Whoa, what'd I do? Oh no. 
Oh, I just hit it. We're good, we're good, okay. Cool. How do I undo that, though? Control Z. Control Z again. Control Z again. Control Z. Control Z. No. Oh, I'm doing Control X. Oh my goodness, what am I doing? Um, I'm just going to delete this layer, because this is a problem layer. Goodbye. And then we'll just duplicate this eyeball and grab the move tool and I'll move this eyeball over here. Oh, it's duplicated. Now it's duplicated. Cool. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Okay. Cool. Uh, let's go back to the body layer and let's save our work. Saving so many times today. Uh, let's look at the board eight. I is really bored. I mean, look at how. Oh, actually, that's kind of cool. Look at that. It's a big X of my eye. Oh, there's a canine tooth. That's after the second tooth. I don't really show more than two teeth. So. Other references. References are so helpful for everything. Like this cyber cyborg laser one. Cyborg sailor one. Oh, look at that. There's a little there's little tufts of fur in the upper body that I never noticed before. Let's do that. Let's add those. Since my solution for dealing with real-time hair is to bake it in as geometry. At least that's currently what I'm thinking is the the best solution. But um, you know, I change my mind about this kind of stuff all the time. So I'm just going to go in here with the snake hook uh, brush, and then just go go maybe on the side angle here. And with the snake hook brush and a really tiny diameter, we're just going to pull uh, breaking the silhouette. Ah, make the brush really tiny. Just going to break the silhouette. A little bit to create little little hairs on the shoulders. Little wings. Make it even smaller like this. I like they do the same thing for the front of the chest here, so just we should probably turn off symmetry for this part. So let's go to Z plugin, or no, transform. This is blocking my view. Let's go to transform, turn off activate symmetry. So symmetry is now off. We can go in here and start sculpting some little hairs on the chest. It's always good to add a little bit of asymmetry with your characters um, because most things in nature are not actually perfectly symmetrical. They're like suggested symmetry, but not actually really deeply symmetrical. I'm just gonna imagine the hair would go on the back like this. I don't, I haven't seen the back of a board ape before, but it's just, you can kind of imagine stuff here. Imagination. Cool, that feels proper. Yeah. Um, oh wow! Thank you so much, folks on Instagram. We got uh, saying keeping keep it up. Says Vander uh, CBD NG says Artface says that's lit. Thank you so much. Cool. Yeah. So my goal is to turn this into a real time character that you can drive in Snapchat, so that you can become the board ape. And then my goal is to try to get this in front of the owner, different owners of board apes. And pitch it as like a product. They need to have an avatar that they can drive in their video calls. Um, they already spent forty-five grand at the least to purchase an ape right now. So why not take it to the next level and uh, sport your board ape in the metaverse, different platforms? Okay, I think this is just about done. In my opinion. Maybe I'll add a little bit of hair to the ears. Do they do that? No, they, pretty, they actually pretty much keep the ears contained. 
yeah, the ears are pretty contained. Okay, so I'm gonna export this geometry now because I'm a happy camper. Oh wow, thank you so much. Friends here on Instagram, on YouTube, lots of love being shared and I really appreciate it. Uh, and I'm happy that we can all kind of learn together and practice together. Uh, so I actually do need to probably hop off to continue a customer project that involves the exact same tools that we're using right now, identical tools, same workflow. The difference is that, wait, is symmetry turned on? Okay, symmetry is off right now. Let me turn symmetry back on. A little bit into the upper ear here. Creating these little crease lines are really helpful for stylizing your sculptures. Do we do anything with the eyelids? Let's take a look. Is there any close-up eyelids? Nope. Nope. Found a bad model for this because the model is super blurry and small. Mm. I guess the closest reference I get to these eyes. When you're bored, when you're a bored ape, your eyes will glaze over like that. So I'm going to make it more glazed. Oh, that feels pretty good on the eyes. I might actually squeeze the eyes in a little bit with the move brush. So grab the move brush, make that brush size a lot larger, and then just bring that in for tighter. Pull on that lower eyelid, give it a little bit of space, bring up on uh, bring down that upper eyelid a bit. Now it looks like they're sleeping. I'm not trying to make them fall asleep. We keep it a the way that we can keep it bored is by having the line be flat when looking at it at an orthographic perspective. If we keep the line flat, it looks like boredom. But if we start to curve it, it's going to look like sleepiness. I'm not trying to make sleepy apes. It's called bored apes. Sleepy apes. Very gently adjusting the nose or the eyelid there. Yeah, that looks like a bored, bored ape. Yeah. Cool. And also, I want to keep a flat eyelid like this. It'll be easier for me to rig it. So I'm going to grab a really tiny brush, switch on H polish, and continue to flatten, flatten this edge here. wonder how many polygons we're sitting at now, because I haven't done a remesh in a while. So this is probably a very heavy model at this point. Adjusting little flat things in the edge there. Woo! Okay, I'm a little hungry, haven't eaten much today. I have food here now, so I'm probably gonna take a break and eat. Your notifications, I don't know why I keep getting those. Okay, well, I would say we're done. I'm really, really happy with the way this is coming out. <laughs> So um, the next phase of things will be doing a process called retopology. So you're going to need to, and we're doing that in VR. So you're going to want to join me in the next live stream because we'll be taking this super high res character and bringing it into virtual reality to do retopology, getting nice edge loops and edge flow on stuff because we want to do facial animation and full body rigging. We're going to need to have that character done. So we, we sculpted this board ape from scratch today. Thank you so much for tuning in. This is all being broadcasted live to YouTube. So if you missed it, you can jump onto YouTube and see every step. We literally started from Z-Spheres. We brought, we blocked out our character. We then sculpted details with the, with the damn standard brush, the clay buildup brush, the H polish brush, the inflate brush, and the move brush. And we stayed inside of ZBrush for that whole time. And so what we'll be doing next is bringing this into VR, but I'm going to do that maybe later tonight. Um, I need to do some client work right now, and I also need to eat some food. Um, board Apes are an NFT collectible 
They made 10,000 apes, like these little illustrations here. And I'm going to make it so that they can wear your ape in AR, in video calls, all in real time through an app called Camera or through called Snap Camera app. Um, thank you all so much for tuning in and learning with me and kind of joining us in the process here. I'm, I'm very happy with this character. Yep. I'm like very so thanks for being here during the beginnings um and yeah we'll be able to do all sorts of cool stuff with it you know once you have geometry you can then texture it we can make it out of chrome you can call them gold apes looks more like grass to be honest or maybe reflective orange apes but texturing comes later i want to finish doing uh topology and stuff before we get into all of that fun fun stuff but for now that's a wrap. Thank you all for tuning in to the live stream. Hopefully you learned a lot. Um, help me out by uh, sharing this stuff on your Twitter accounts. That's where a lot of the crypto folks live. I want to try to get the attention of someone who purchased a, a Bored Ape. So if you can, you can share this and tag Bored Ape Yacht Club, that will definitely help with my goal. Uh, I'll keep making content for free like this and we can, uh, we can help each other out. All right, so I'm gonna end the stream here on Instagram. Uh, the full stream will be available on YouTube. Hopefully you learned a ton. Sculpting. Oh, we got a question from Kellex Savage. Says, what was the name of the app again? This app is called ZBrush. Um, ZBrush. It is a fantastic app. Hard to use, hard to learn, but you can start off with ZBrush Core Mini, which is their free version of the software, and it offers a lot of my favorite brushes. And then... The end result is we're going to put this into the snap camera so that you can run, you can drive this character in real time with your face and your body movements. That's the goal, at least. I don't know how possible all of this is. I haven't tried it, but I think it should be possible. I think all the pieces of the puzzle exist now where we can use AI to drive the body animation and uh, facial recognition AI to drive all the facial animation. We have a lot of steps more to go, though, folks. So the next step will be bringing this into VR to do retopology. Uh, it says, uh, no, the one that lets you wear the AR. Oh, yeah, that's going to be called uh, Snap Camera. You can download Snap Camera right here for free. So if you go to Gugus, the Gugus Gods, Snap Camera. It is an app, Snap Camera, um, snapcamera.snapchat. You don't need Snapchat to use it. It's called Snap Camera. You can download it, and then it lets you run, inst uh, lets you run Snapchat lenses in any of your video calls. So you don't even, isn't that, that's wild, right? Cause then you don't even need to download, you, you don't have to use Snapchat. You can use their camera technology for Zoom calls, for your um, Microsoft team calls, Google Hangouts, FaceTime calls if you're on a Mac computer. So if you get Snap Camera, it works on Windows and it works on Mac and it lets you wear face filters. And so my goal is to give you a really crazy, powerfully rigged, um, I'm going to rig this character up so that you can drive that inside of Snap Camera. Um, and, I, and then my goal is to try to, to get the attention of Board Ape owners, get the attention of Snapchat for the future metaverse, NFT collectibles, all that good stuff. So that's all, folks. Thank you so, so much for tuning in. Um, we will continue again later if we get the chance. Um, but uh, I need to do some client work right now. That is similar to this, but um, and, you know it helps me pay the bills, helps me keep electricity on and fast internet speeds and affording the licenses to all these software. So I need to go do some client work, um, but that is all for now and I'll talk to you later. I'm gonna go ahead and end the stream. Uh, bye bye everybody on YouTube, thank you for being here and bye everybody on Instagram. I'll save, I'll save the YouTube one and I might save the, 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 the Instagram one. Bye-bye. And now, great. And I'll go ahead and end that here on YouTube. Bye-bye, everybody. Thanks for stopping by.